Hi, George. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, it's, it's all good. Uh, today, uh, today we won't have work done on the call, so but let's uh, let's give it a few minutes. Uh, let's see if anybody else is gonna connect. Cool. No worries. All right, uh, let's get started. Um, share my screen. Starting with our Hyperledger disclaimer and uh, maybe also removing this bot off the call. Um, doubt. There we go. All right. <clears throat> All right. So, uh, welcome to um, 13 April 2023, RSVCX Community Call. And this is our antitrust policy notice uh, by High Pledger Foundation. I mean to do that. Yeah, uh, so for anyone tuning in, uh, we have these calls every Thursday, uh, Thursdays, 9 a.m. UTC. <clears throat> if you would like to come and uh, discuss something, uh, To, you can also just connect and talk with us. Uh, so, so to kick off the to kick off the uh, meeting, I uh, just just to check, um, George, uh, am I coming in clearly? Uh, is my internet fine? 
Um, you cut out for about five or so seconds just then. Oh, I see. Let me try to fix that. Hopefully that the radio waves will feel more Vulcan when when the doors are when the door is open. <laughs> so let's see if that helps. Um, all right, so good first issues. So just kind of like quick, uh, quick recap there, uh, just to also kind of periodically keep this as a theme uh, to keep uh, good first issues mind, good first issues in mind. So. Uh, there was one I've created recently about um, updating time, create dependency, as there was automatic update which failed because there's actually breaking changes. And I saw that uh, just 15 hours ago, we had a new first uh, contributor, uh, SWAPTR, uh, Swapter, um, with a contribution here to basically update this dependency. Seems like there's still something failing, uh, some clippy, uh, some unit tests. So I think I'll still have to uh, take a look at that. Uh, nevertheless, thank you, Swapter, for these uh, contributions. And always exciting to have a new people on board and having uh, contributions. Um, we also have other two first good first issues in progress right now. Uh, one is from Andy Wayne, who uh, updated uh, once again his uh, his branch, um, tried to address uh, some of our previous comments, uh, but uh, nevertheless, there's also some some something to be addressed here. So, looking forward to getting this merge in, and then. Uh, Next up, yeah, there was um, a short uh, discussion here on the attribute encoding uh, from Stevane. So this was going on for a while, and Stevane was very persistent, uh, still always addressing our reviews and comments. Uh, so Stevane will be busy for a bit, but uh, he still plans to work on this in the first week of May. So that's all good. Um, and yeah, that's, I guess, all of our open good first issues right now. Uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a good to, if, if anyone has idea, uh, even outside of this call or, uh, to, to, to create, to, to come up with some good first issues, that'll be awesome. Uh, next up, a small update on our uh, Hyperledger mentorship program. Um, I'm sure that there are some people tuning in, uh, curious, particular about this this part. Uh, so uh, just to kind of remind uh, the mentees, the applicants, uh, how how the program goes. So right now we are in the period of time where people can the, the mentee. Uh, people who are interested in Menti can send application, uh, and there's instructions here how to do that. So that's all the way until 10th of May. Then from 10th of May all the way to the end of May, it's basically time for us to select uh, the mentees and notify them about the acceptance. And starting June 1st, uh, 23, that will be the working period until mid-November. Um, yeah, and in the meantime, there's some evaluation uh, kind of dates as well. Um, and yeah, I also wanted to talk a bit about the projects um, a little bit more because there was people asking me uh, to tell them more about these, um, these, both of the projects we have. Uh, people who are interested. So let me uh, put a picture here. Uh, I'll stop sharing for a second.
Okay, um, I'm sharing back again. So picture I had here, and it was, it's not the prettiest picture. Uh, I kind of does get the work done. It's a picture I, I, I drew uh, while on call uh, with one of our uh, uh, applicants. <clears throat> so basically, uh, we have two projects, right? We have uh, the next gen mobile wrapper and we have message mediator. So the, the mobile wrapper uh, that's on this picture uh, marked with a blue color down here at the bottom left. So that's kind of the scope this represents. It's a, it's a, a next generation mobile wrapper on top of Aries VCX enabling uh, use cases where people want to build presumably mobile wallets uh, supporting um, Aries protocols and anon creds and so on. Uh, so this 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 would be the the meat of this uh, job would be to to write this layer uh, finish. There is a POC right now available, but there is a lot more work to be done there. And the scope would be mainly to finish uh, finish this part. And in addition to that, create a Aries Mediator client. Uh, that's uh, that's essentially very specialized uh, Bitcom API client um, to innate, to communicate with the Mediator server. Um, and basically from this UniF5 wrapper, then uh, there will be auto-generated Swift and Kotlin bindings. And part of the scope of the project is also uh, build a small, it could be very simple, uh, Android um, uh, application as a demo. Uh, it'll be, it doesn't have to do all of the protocols, uh, but uh, it would be nice if it can at least uh, accept an invitation. That's kind of the, the baseline for a good, good starting for point for anyone else to start adding uh, other protocols and other features and so, so on and so forth. Uh, and here on the top left, uh, I mean, this is just kind of the note, uh, kind of explaining um, maybe uh, a, a textbook example of how things work in the Aries ecosystem, um, in Aries deployments. Usually you have some uh, con consumer, I'll call her Alice here, with a mobile device. Uh, she'll be holder of a of a, of a mobile wallet uh, capable of Aries protocols and uh, should at least uh, want to communicate with institutions, for example, a bank or any other institution. Uh, but the thing is, um, as you can see here, there's also one box between them. So usually Alice can easily communicate with the bank because bank has some sort of uh, public endpoint exposed as and there's kind of an example here that uh, the two pieces of information which Alice needs to have in order to communicate with uh, other party through DITCOM is service endpoint, um, and which will be just URL where messages, where Alice can send messages. Other will be a public key which she uses to encrypt the messages. Uh, that's kind of in nutshell what you need for Bitcoin. And then from the other side, obviously, if bank wants to initiate or the institution wants to initiate a com conversation, communication, uh, it would need also the same set of information. However, there is no public endpoint. Uh, you know, there's no direct way to uh, directly send message to Alice's device. Uh, if we forget about maybe like some IPv6 stuff and things like that. But we assume the device doesn't have any public endpoint. And so uh, the architecture is similar like with uh, mail servers where you have a server uh, where you have an account as a consumer, as Alice, and uh, this, serv this service can receive messages on your behalf. So there will be a mediator box here. And that's also where every mediator um, client kind of plugs in here. So for Air, for Alice to communicate with the mediator and pick up the messages, which she might have received while, you know, during the night, 
um, you need some sort of client to to talk to this box, and uh, that's that's what this uh, uh, this blue box down here from the previous from the first project is doing. Uh, and now moving on to the second project, that's the mediator itself, and uh, that's uh, here with a purple color. So here is a mediator a bit zoomed in. So uh, just to get an idea what what might be in there, how it kind of would look. Generally, you will have uh, some some wire communication layer, uh, you know, re receiving message HTTP or WebSocket messages. After you receive messages, they're typically encrypted. So you need to de decrypt it. Uh, then once some sort of a decrypted message pops out, you need to take a look what kind of message it is. And for that, you can use Aries VCX uh, to support you know, uh, processing some of these messages uh, for some of the Aries protocols. <clears throat> so the green ones are the ones we already have implemented in Aries VCX, and it will just kind of build on top of them. The red one pickup protocol is currently not present in Aries VCX, and uh, therefore the scope of this uh, purple project would also be uh, addition of uh, pickup protocol to, to Aries VCX, although I, I don't expect that to be a huge, uh, huge effort. Uh, well, and then essentially, yeah, as you can see, you have three families of messages you might be receiving uh, based on what kind of message it is you do something else with it if you receive an external message uh, addressed to someone you would uh, which is common use case uh, you would simply pretty much just store the message on on uh, under the you know link uh, linked up with the recipient and then second use case is picking up those messages so once the recipient here, it would be Alice in this example. Once Alice come online, she would try to contact mediator uh, using the Aries mediator client uh, to pick up the messages. And that's essentially this pickup protocol. What well, this pickup protocol is uh, um, specifying. There are Aries RFCs on GitHub, which I'll be adding uh, here. Uh, just after uh, our meeting, just just after this meeting, with uh, further information about these RFCs, but uh, that's pretty much it. Um, obviously, you need to have some sort of persistence layer to store these uh, received messages, uh, so they can be picked up later by the proper and authorized recipient. Um, it's also important to keep in mind scalability. So this service should be horizontal, horizontally scalable. So you should try to avoid using some sort of in-memory storages, uh, making sure that the storage is the state is distributed, and that there won't be any complications scaling this out into, you know, entire cluster of uh, mediator containers or something like that. Um, yeah, George, have I missed anything? I don't think so. That that's that's really great. Um, is this image available anywhere or will it be? Uh, yeah, it's not. Uh, my original plan was to make it a bit prettier before the meeting. Yeah. I completely missed, yeah. missed it. So I just had to pull it out uh, in this uglier form. But uh, I'll be putting into the I'll, I'll be putting it into the meeting notes so people can find it there. Yep, yeah, it looks looks great to me. Awesome. So let's move forward then uh, to the to the usual stuff. Um, so so uh, let's start with the overview of the work done. So we had this extraction of Aries VCX core um, and by uh, Mira, and uh, it's all approved. But uh, you you had a, a great great catch there that uh, this was originally ran with the skip CI, which is something we discussed last time. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I totally missed it. So I put a rerun and why, 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 why it's not running? That's weird. It's still skipped. Uh, although I have, I did remove it. Wait, wait, wait. That's, that's strange. Let me try to rerun it again. 
Okay, we'll see how it goes and hopefully we can uh, rerun all jobs. Yes, sir. Rerun all. Okay. Okay, we'll, we'll see. I guess we'll see in a couple minutes if uh, this goes as expected. Uh, so, yeah, but maybe to talk about a little bit about this, this PR. So, um, and actually, I have one more picture and I just need to pull it out and find it somewhere. So, I'll stop sharing for a second uh, just to give this uh, PR some additional context. Um, that was uh, basically how we iterated to this. Um, idea of that we should we should even do this piece of work as uh, we were uh, discussing with meta how should we go about the resolver implementation and and yeah this is this PR is what we uh, ended up with as a sort of pre uh, preparation work um now let me find Pretty picture we had. All right, I think I got that image now. I'm sharing again. Um, I'm sorry for a little technical hiccups here. Okay, uh, there we go. So uh, what this PR is, do is doing is extracting a portion of Pre portion, big portion of code which was previously uh, part of Ares VCX, uh, in particular the, the the profiles and the trait which are shielding off uh, particular implementation details about storage, a ledger client, and uh, credential uh, implementation. Uh, so this is all extracted out, and the reason why we even did that. Uh, was that we wanted to uh, basically st started thinking how to build the ID resolver. Uh, so we thought about some like trades here, uh, which is not really like point, uh, not really important here. We can leave that for a separate discussion. But basically, we came to uh, obvious uh, realization that when we build did re did resolver, we will need access. For example, when we build uh, a resolver for uh, this solve method, obviously we'll need access to sovereign ledger, and we already have uh, this this profiles which contains this API and functionality in Ares VCX, but uh, behind those those profiles. But in order to access them, obviously, um, we would either have to do like make a did resolver dependent on Aries VCX, which doesn't make sense because then we would have like cyc cyclical dependency. Aries VCX and did resolver, did resolver needs Aries VCX, which would uh, lead us to basically placing did resolver into Aries VCX. However, we wanted to have it uh, as a separate crate so people could use the ID resolver. We're going to implement in projects, perhaps without uh, necessarily uh, using Aries protocols. Um, so um, that obvious conclusion was that if we extract out all these profiles, uh, including the especially the ledger profile, then we can just have it as a shared dependency. Aries VCX can depend on these profiles as it's using them today. Aries VCX can use the ID resolver and the ID resolver on its own could also rely on these profiles. So people who want to use only the ID resolver can use can do so without having to bother, you know, being concerned with the Aries stuff at all. 
And so, yeah, so then we extracted this as a separate component right now as like a one huge crate. Uh, I don't know, maybe in, I'm not sure if it, it would make sense to uh, split it out further. I don't think there's a need for that at this moment. Uh, but uh, I don't know, perhaps if somebody, it, I think it's possible to go in in the future where somebody might want to, might be interested in, I would say only, um, you know, using Ledger and doesn't care about wallet and credx at all. So then would maybe actually make sense to take out and the, the ledger component as a the, the ledger profile as a as a crate on its own, which would kind of basically be a facade behind the BDR tools and um the the modular libraries. So yeah, um, that's pretty much it. Uh, let's just wait for the CI. Although I have the bad feeling it keeps keeping these jobs. Yes, and I don't know why. Maybe we need to like push a new, hmm. new commit or something like that. I'll sort it out after after the call. Uh, other than that, there was uh, clean some some uh, smaller cleanups of dependencies. Uh, this one is still pending review, and the other one was merged. There was dependencies which are not used, and also a bunch of dead code which was deleted. Uh, next up, there was drop support for the legacy format of uh, serialized proof verifier. Um, state machines which have been created by a version before 053 release uh, so uh, there's an upcoming pr for the 054 release and so therefore since we drop this support now uh, in 054 we will no longer support those old serialization formats uh, you'll have to you'll have to follow the migration strategy provided in 053 release to essentially re-serialize uh, the state machines. Uh, that's, I guess, that's what that that's that's it for what we've done since the last call. And then we have some work in progress. Uh, we have a messages integration. Uh, this, this has been open for a while. Uh, the recent refactoring um, of the extraction of Aries VCAX core kind of shuffled the cards as this had to be this had to this has to be rebased. Uh, and also uh, Bogdan is not here, but I know the challenge uh, right now is uh, just to get the uh, the tests integration tests up and running. We were doing a whole bunch of uh, internal testing with these changes in APSA. Uh, and it looks good. Uh, seems like it's it's working, um, but obviously we want to maintain the CI as is. So there's still some uh, work pending to to sync up the tests with the changes. Uh, and yeah, lastly, I suppose apart from like uh, the smaller things. Uh, there's a type state pattern holder, and I saw there was a bit of a discussion here between Bogdan and uh, and you, George. But mm. fortunately, I didn't have yet a um, chance to to take a look here. Um, so I'll, I guess I'll take a look. Perhaps do you have any comments on this one? Uh, although you already wrote a whole bunch of stuff, so I should probably read it first. But Still, it's a, it's a space for talking. So if you want to somewhat comment it or if you have any new thoughts. Yeah, um, do you want me to show you sort of what I have so far and maybe? Well, yeah, for sure, we have we have time, so why not? I'll stop sharing.
Uh, you can you can see that okay? Yeah, yeah, it's all good. Mm -hmm. Um, so like I I originally started that PR before we had the revised um sort of guidelines for how to make mm -hmm. types. Um, so it had a lot of sending messages and and things on that line, which we don't want anymore. Um, and also that that PR started um, before messages two existed, um, so it was it was getting pretty outdated. Um, so recently, I've just been working on a new branch, um, trying to follow the new guidelines, um, and yeah, um, so. Basically, I'll go over some of what I have so far. Um, so it's it's mostly based off the original um, holder handler, um, but following the new guidelines. Um, so for instance, none, none of these are filled out yet. I've just been drafting uh, the states and transitions and want to get them approved before I go any further. Um, but yeah, so... Firstly, uh, the first state is proposal prepared. Um, so you can reach this state um, by initializing a new holder um, with your proposal data. Um, so this is basically the holder beginning uh, the protocol saying that I want a credential with this data. And then um, after they create the holder and enter into the state um, they have the ability to get the proposal message which then they can send uh, on their own account um, so this part's good because it means that no errors can happen um, there's no chance of any errors um, and then so after they've uh, assumedly got that uh, proposal message and sent it out and then received an offer back, uh, an offer credential message, um, then they have the opportunity to transition into uh, the next offer received phase. Um, so this is what this API does. Uh, and originally I had this as returning like an Aries VCX error, um, but uh, Bogdan mentioned that we may as well do it like this, um, where the error type is the holder in the failed state. Uh, and yeah, in the in the PR, uh, I'd written it like that. Uh, and the reason I didn't go straight for the holder failed state is because it it seemed a little scary to implement, but I don't actually think it'll be so bad. Um, and yeah, so the reason that this can fail is because uh, there's ledger interactions and also a non-creds interactions that need to happen as part of this step. Um, so there is sort of a chance of failure. Um, and yeah, this is sort of the first maybe controversial thing uh, I was hoping to get yours and Bogdan's opinion on, um, which is this API right here uh, even though it's a transition API, I have it as taking uh, a reference to self, borrowing self, rather than consuming it. Um, and the, the reason for that is if this was consuming it and um, it ended up in the fail state, uh, now the, the consumer has no reference back to the original. Um, um, but... If this is borrowing, then if this ends up here, uh, and then they determine that, you know, it was only a soft failure, maybe it was uh, the ledger timed out, uh, you know, a, a retriable error. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, like what 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 uh, I notice here, or what, what was like, what is current, what is uh, on on this line, what is off with my, uh, like. Uh, conception understanding you know of the of the guidelines of the stuff we discuss is basically here uh like you are returning 
And like there, there's two possibilities of what kind of holder might be returned. Whereas, and, and I mean, we might have to just update the guidelines. Maybe just something we, we didn't uh, like discuss uh, enough. And so maybe you have some different understanding, but but my understanding would be that uh, that we always uh, kind of only either return like the new state successfully or we return error, but not the, but not actually the you know the holder in like a failed state and and so I would I would assume uh, what I would originally expect would re returning result where the error portion of the result be yeah just some sort of a, some sort of Aries VCX error or something like that and then yeah. and then it would consume self and then it will be up to the caller to either retry it again if it makes sense or just enter the failed state manually because oh and they see they they have got an error from receive offer so there's no way to go about it just uh, entering the the the, the failed state yeah, um, so that's that's sort of how I, I wrote it out here, where um, this this should take in an error as well, but they have to opt into transitioning into the failed state. Um, is that sort of what you were expecting? Yeah, yeah, I think yeah, yeah. That basically, I think what you have drafted there is more closer to my expectations. Yeah. See, this was um this was uh, Bogdan's response to that. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. I see. Right. So I think we will have to, uh, we'll have to go through this and make sure that we are aligned on this. I think yeah. I'm, 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 I mean, I, I like her, the original approach, I think with the, with the error and then going to the failed state on your own sort of, that way you yeah. don't have to take the reference and and it's kind of nice and uh, sy symmetrical like uh well i think you still would have to take a reference um because if this results in error then you've oh, still lost self right. so there's still that problem right oh yeah right 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 mm -hmm. yeah i see i see um so yeah, what, what do you think? Does, does this seem okay? Like it's not perfect type state transitions because you're keeping the original. I mean, so. I, I know that Bogdan was uh, like, he had lots of concerns about this and, uh, and he was trying to find, you know, good uh, like typing solution to kind of figure out this like um, how to prevent, you know, like using the state machine after maybe it was already modified like if you take a if you if you take a reference here and you return new new state machine how can you kind of prevent you know the developer making mistake by using the old one yeah um but i don't know i mean it would be it would be definitely like um nice to have something like that at the same time i feel like this kind of uh like guard controls can be Added later somehow. I, I don't know exactly what would be the solution. But uh, yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense that like you might want to, for some reason, want to still access the original original data. Like you don't want to just lose it. And and we also, I guess, I mean, if you, otherwise, if you consume self, the developer wants to maintain the original data. They would have to make a clone ahead of time, right? And juggling two state machines kind of at once. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, I think um if if a developer really wants to keep the original uh state, they can do that no matter what. We can't really prevent them from doing that. Um, because they can always clone or serialize and deserialize before calling some consuming API. I, I think this was another uh, option Bogdan sort of alluded to um, where it consumes self, but the result is either the new state or it's, <laughs> it's an error where it contains the original state plus, you know, the error. Hmm. 
yeah, and that way maybe yeah like it's pretty maybe kind of complicated but uh it yeah it ensures that if they do get to the successful state then the original is consumed but if or, they fail or per, uh, I mean, maybe it's inefficient but perhaps even like uh, always uh, always always returning the previous state and the new state and that way you could just like i guess the signature would be simpler because you could just return some sort of tuple of holder you know previous state and the new state previous state would be whatever the previous state would be and the new state would be either the successful state or the failed state and we wouldn't have to have the manual failure transition method so basically re result and then uh, result and in the result uh Are you talking about something like that, or? Yeah, but basically it would be a tuple. Maybe the successful case, right? Like a holder, like it would return a result, and then in the result it would be successful. You know, successful result would be tuple of previous state. Oh. Well, I think yeah, if it's can't really do that, right? Yeah, never I think if it's successful, yeah, we don't want to give them. If they succeed, we don't want to give them back the original state because it was successful. So there's no point in them keeping the original state. But if it fails, then we want to give them back the original state uh, in case they decide that it's not a hard failure. No, yeah, yeah, I was, I was off. I thought that we could return tuple of like previous case, previous state, new state, just every time. But then you wouldn't, you couldn't really express that in Rust because, like the the new state can be one of uh, maybe multiple states. It can be uh, the successful one or the failed one or maybe even something else. Hmm. Uh, so that's that's no go. So yeah, that that's a. I mean, it, it looks quite complicated in way. This way, the signature uh, might be more matching, but at the same time, there is some beauty in it too, I think. And especially if you can have like the, the method, the transition methods uh, like um, symmetrical in terms of always just consuming self and then it's not like sometimes it's self and sometimes it's reference. Yeah. I'll be a definitely a nice property. So, so you're saying you prefer this sort of signature to this one, where it's taking a reference, but no two. Yeah, I'm kind of on the fence. I'll have to think about it a bit more. Okay. Yep. Cool. I'll uh, I'll think about it and uh, join join the discussion on the on the issue. Cool. Okay. I'll 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 post this update on the thread. Um, but yeah, I guess I guess the rest of these state transitions are fairly straightforward. Um, uh, yeah, this is another constructor as well because you can technically start the protocol in from the offer state. So you send off an initial offer rather than you sending off an initial proposal. Mm. Um, so yeah, similar transitions. You can go back and forth between proposal and offer uh, if you're negotiating the credential details. Uh, that's part of the protocol. Uh, and then once you're happy, you progress forward by preparing your uh, request. And that puts you into the request prepared state. Uh, and when you're in there, you can fetch the message and then send it off on your own terms. Um, and then when you're in this state, uh, you know, it's assumed that you've sent off your uh, credential request message. And then once you receive the final issue credential message uh, from the issuer, uh, you receive it and enter into a credential received state. Uh, and then once you're in there, you can store it uh, and storing it uh results in you transitioning to finished 
uh right but a quest wait re receive issue credential and store credential received yeah so this is something different to uh this is another controversial thing that is different to the original holder mm. api where, uh I, I i guess you receive it and then maybe once you're happy with it then you store it mm. or do you think it should just be receive it and store it and then transition uh, uh, i'm not sure at the moment what would be the implementation maybe what would the receive uh, the receive issue credential what what will what would it actually do what kind pretty of much, pretty much nothing but stuff away the the message into this state mm. maybe it's not worth it for it to be a right maybe maybe you receive a like um uh, Yeah, there could be some like still maybe validation like well if the credential you received is actually what you expected right so you wouldn't just store uh store some something you don't want in your wallet yeah hmm. yeah i guess i guess it could be also think about it but one more question uh which is popping popping in my mind is um remember that the holder is also sending ec like acknowledgement message at the end isn't he so yes so, so this is maybe another controversial thing but you transition into finished um and you know maybe we have it like this and and get rid of this one uh and this transition straight into finished um but once you're in finished uh then you can get the ac message um, because I, I wasn't really sure mm -hmm. how to represent the intermediate step uh, or whether sending the ACK is a part of the finished state or mm -hmm. how to present it as like the step before you're finished. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it seemed a bit awkward to represent that, but this isn't the best either because... I don't know, someone might see finished and assume that they're done and not bother sending the act message, even though they should. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, right, right. Um, yeah, but I think it's, I mean, it's it's aligned with the fact that we don't do IO anymore. So you just get the message you need to send as you, I mean, usually with, with all the other steps within the protocol, it's the same way, right? you like get the request message or get proposal message so the same way you get the get the ag message and you send it with some like uh, it's it's up to the consumer to send it somehow right hmm. and maybe just a question if the yeah if if the if the act of sending the message or allegedly sending the message it should if it should lead to some sort of like uh, next next state yeah uh, i'm not even sure if holder is uh, obliged to send the egg message or if it's only if the issuer asks for the acknowledgement yeah yeah in the original implementation it only sends the ack if there is the the please ack flag um but i'm not totally sure if that's 100 accurate to the RFC hmm. but that was the original implementation right uh, yeah I assume it's probably that way maybe question is how it works with the, the 2.0 protocol of the issuance yeah yeah um so yeah if if the act message is in the finished state um this was another idea I had where it returns an option uh and it it only returns some if the please act flag was true mm. um if that's one way to represent whether you should be sending the act message or not yeah right how about these are like uh great uh findings i mean you're doing uh pioneering work here so, 
as, as we wrote all those guidelines and uh, now you're now you are kind of um, yeah, doing the first rewrite, uh, trying to follow them and trying to tweak it to change the approach you've been doing following before. So yeah, uh, it's, it's definitely valuable just to have this. this the, I mean, I, I assume that implementation of the other protocols will be much easier as we kind of dig through these like big question marks of like how to do this, how to do that. And then yep. once we have it answered, we can just readopt the same approach everywhere else. Yep. Yeah, exactly. I think so. Um, I, I mean, like, I guess these questions about certain things, uh, result types and whatnot, uh, consuming or not to consume, I'll post them in the thread. Um, but I think they, they won't block me too much, uh, just proceeding with the implementation now. Um, mm -hmm. they're just sort of minor details. Um, so I'll, I'll go ahead and just start implementing uh, if we're somewhat happy with the shape of these, apart from mm -hmm. the questions. Yeah, yeah, I think, I mean, uh, I think it looks looks good uh, in general. I'll just have to take a closer look at the discussion. Cool. Okay, yeah, that, that that's all from me. Sorry for taking up a bit of time. No, it's all good. It was a, it was a good good talk. Um, all right, then let's, uh, let's, let me share my screen again. Uh, and I'll just add notes here. Uh, I had like a high level we just covered. So there was a question, kind of open question about the return types in case of error. And then we also uh, kind of touched on the uh, self, self. And then we had, I had, um, mm, oh, so se separate states uh, mm, received credential and store credential. And then one more point was uh, the acknowledgement message at the end. Okay, uh, so we have these on the table. This was really nice discussion. And moving on to the next one about the upcoming work. So. Uh, we have uh, Mira currently working on the did parser, did resolver. We have uh, yourself uh, working on the credential holder and basically all of us kind of going through these uh, questions which arise. Uh, so uh, I'll put it. No, that, that's, that's, well, I'm talking about upcoming work, but uh, I got a little bit tangled up here. Uh, upcoming work well Miro will start to uh work on these in like in a close future i suppose so that's why it's still an upcoming work um and then we have the type state pattern i assume uh once maybe this is in a little bit matured pr um we might pick somebody uh, might pick up the other type state uh, pattern implementation here and i guess that's like uh, the close future ahead of us um Still, as for the as for the getting rid of VDR tools, I think the like main next point is to get rid of the like is a rewrite issuer with the credex. And um, once that is done, um, we might be able to start trimming down a VDR tools such that it would only essentially contain the wallet. The original wallet and we could uh, consume consume um, indie client and credx implementation from the modular 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 libraries um yeah and uh, we have four minutes left there's a bit of a tiny uh discussion point here about the crate naming uh so 
just notice that we have a bit of an inconsistency here, I think, or do we? Maybe I was wrong. Seems like all of the crates are with underscore. Just that the repository name is with a dash. And then also the name of the crate itself is the dash. Maybe this is what, this will trigger me to, to add this point there. I just... If we name the crate this way, maybe we could um, name the directories, use the dash for directories as well. And then I guess the second inconsistency is that for the other projects, for example, agency client, we also use underscore for the directory name. But here we also use underscore for the crate name of the package name. So because we should kind of um, find, unify this approach, although it's just like a minor thing. Um, I guess my personal suggestion would be since since we named the repository Aries-VCX, um, I think we could just, and also we call the package the, the same way. Yeah. Uh, we could just use dashes everywhere. And also, I guess when I'm looking at the other dependencies we depend on, uh, looking at how, how this is being done in a ecosystem, um, is that in the, in the credits is also with the dash. And, but I know, I mean, this is uh, kind of, the, the, there is no single, I think, recommendation in the Rust ecosystem. I saw lots of crates with underscore, but also lots of uh, crates with dash. So there, I, I guess it's kind of up to the individual projects and crates what kind of approach they adopt. But what do you think, George? I'm like, uh, I'm browsing the internet at the moment trying to find what the idiomatic way is and i can't find an answer <laughs> yeah because so, for example serde serde i think is using that, underscores yeah serde underscore jason yeah that's, that's, yeah that's what i thought of but then others have dashes so i'm confused yeah 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 it's it's uh it's it's 50 50 i feel like but um yeah we should definitely stick to one <laughs> i yeah. i have no preference personally mm. Uh, let's take a look at the VDR tools uh, here. What kind of dependencies is here? A lazy static is an underscore. Serity is underscore. But log derive. Oh, that's a small crate though. Uh, all of the indie stuff is with dash. So it's, they're consistently using dashes. Is that right? Yeah, yeah it would appear. Also indie credit X. Well, let's take a look at the uh, indie. Maybe there is no dash in the name. Uh, it, unknown credits RS, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Um, RS. I think they also have. Uh, they also have dash. Yeah, repos the dash. Um, oh. <laughs> and then the name of the package is actually different than the repository name. <laughs> Yeah, I think I think uh, I'll go with the dashes since it looks like it's popular in the hype ledger slash indie slash Aries. Yeah, and, Aries Aska is is a dash. That great. Hmm. And so and our repository name has a dash in it as well, right? So. Yeah. All right, so there will be some uh, big rename, I mean, directory renaming, but uh, I guess let's leave that after some of these big PRs are merged here. Yeah. You know, making things harder than they have to be. All right. Uh, oh, and then one more point, although we are just on time. Uh, this one is short. Uh, I was just thinking what kind of... I was thinking it would be nice if we use maybe some shared prefix for all the projects which are incepted uh, under the Aries VCX repository. So for example, messages or like uh, or pretty much everything. 
So I was thinking like if that we could prefix, um, I'm not sure about the directory names, but at least like the crates themselves, perhaps. I mean, once we start publishing this, uh, I'm I'm ninety percent sure that probably messaging <laughs> already exists on crates. Yep. I so we would need somehow to distinguish ourselves. Right. So I was thinking Aries Aries VCX Aries dash VCX dash whatever, or maybe even I don't know as an experimental um, brainstorming idea, like some abbreviation like AVCX or or maybe just Aries dash something Aries dash messages. You know, I, I, I guess there's multiple things one could come up with. Yeah. Um... Is there a reason we couldn't go with just Aries? You know, no, there's not any reason. Um, I'm just wondering if then Aries is not a bit too specific, though. Because, for example, yeah. let's say we create like uh, you know, we create now did resolver, and it's gonna be like Aries did resolver. But right. uh, people who want, might want to use it, you know, they want to use the like Rust implementation of some DID resolver. It's gonna be like oh uh, Aries did resolve us. That's not what I'm, I, I don't care about Aries. This seems to be something else, right? Mm -hmm. So I was thinking maybe something less uh like specific or at least at the at the face value, like AVCX, it's like some string, you know, whatever it means. Like it could mean Aries VCX, but AVCX messages, like nobody would if somebody consumes it, maybe they wouldn't be concerned about this AVCX. Right. Yep. I know. I just I I'll I'll just, I'll just leave it like a, a open question and I don't know maybe send a poll on Discord or something and yep. discuss with the others. I just wanted to like uh, put this put this topic on a plate to start thinking about it as as the new crates are being born you now. All right. Uh, anything else from your side? No, not from me. Okay, awesome. So we we got it all done. It was a uh, pretty long agenda today. Um, yeah, so thank you. Thank you for uh, taking time to join. I know it's late now, so I should get some dinner. And uh, now it's we'll see every every, every other every, everyone else uh, again uh, next next week uh, 9 am UTC feel free to join thank you George oh cool. thank you cheers cheers